Hey, I'm Turbo John. Welcome to my channel. You may have noticed I lost that round, but I'm going to show you how to review your data so you can figure out what went wrong so you can go faster and get you some wind lights. So we're going to just talk a little bit about boost creep, over boosting, boost curve, and you know what happened to my car the other day. Hopefully it'll be uh, helpful for you guys on, you know, when you see a data log, um, you know, what you're actually seeing, what you're encountering. So um, over here, this is the basic Holly stuff. So you come into the, the turbo function, the boost function, and this is the setup. You can see I was leaving on 10 pounds of CO2 pressure. And then uh, my scramble button, my old crap button's got five. And down here, I've got the boost pressure above 40 to revert to wastegate. Um, now in the case of a stuck wastegate though, I mean, if it's stuck closed, even if you pull all the, the CO2 pressure off of it, it's not gonna make any difference. Uh, now, one of the wastegates would have reverted to wastegate, and so it would have lost, uh, you know, dome pressure on that one, so it may have dropped boost some, but I don't know how much it would have actually dropped. So that may or may not have worked like I anticipated. I mean, I've got another option here, you know, cut ignition, but I don't like to do, to do that. So this is a hard ignition cut, so when the boost would go above 40 PSI, it would cut the ignition off, but then as soon as it got back in the parameter, then it would cut the, the car back on. So it would cause it to fluctuate from what I have seen. And, you know, cutting it on and off, I don't know that that's a good idea. Um, maybe there's another way to do it, but I usually just put revert to wastegate. But um, going over here, looking at my, my time, my, this is my actual boost ramp. And you see I've got it set. This is a zero down here in this corner. There's 15 cells, and then this is three seconds. So every one of these cells is two tenths of a second. So one of the mistakes you don't want to ever make, whatever this launch boost is, you don't ever want your first spot to be lower than that at zero. So basically if this was zero and started to ramp, then I would leave on 10 pounds of boost, but as soon as you let go of the trans brake button, it would try to vent all the CO2 pressure off. So you don't want to do that. So this always needs to be at least the number of that. And sometimes it tracks really good, you know, I'll ramp this number up higher. So I'll leave on 10 pounds of boost, and then the first number here in this cell will be 14 or 16. And as soon as I let go of the trans brake button, it jacks it up there and then follows the ramp. That really gets the turbo moving good. But it kind of depends on you know what the track can handle and you know what, what kind of uh, 60 foot you're trying to go. But you can see on this one, it was 10, and then it was a gradual ramp to 30, and it was a two second build time. And generally the turbo is gonna be a little bit behind what this ramp is. So, um, you know, but that's okay, that's, that's normal, that's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna show you the data log of the pass that it did not stick, the first pass at the race this past weekend. Um, so let me click on it and now it's back. Okay, so this is the data log, and you can see um, when I come up over here, I was talking earlier, I've got a rich spot here. It goes uh, way rich, I don't know what's happened, um, but it goes way rich. If you guys are following Devin Vanderhoof, he's got a lot of good tech videos as well for Holly. So um, he's a good person to, to watch. Um, but this is a, a advanced table for helping it build boost. This is my timing curve here. So you can see when I get here, it starts, my data log starts at 85% throttle and it just comes over, comes up, hits the two step. Um, it's lagging a little bit through here now. Uh, once it gets going, once it gets to the two-step, then it bangs off pretty good and doesn't take but just a, a few short seconds and I'm there. Uh, yellow line is the boost, and so you can see it got to my boost, and what I did is I put timing back in it at, I think, seven or seven and a half degrees, uh, or seven, seven and a half pounds, um, and that's when, you know, I know that that's what my launch boost wants to be. If I kept pulling timing out, then this thing would probably keep on spinning and make another pound or two pounds of boost. But, um, you know, you put the timing back in it when you get there. So this thing left, um, it left a, on 7.4 pounds of boost, um, 7.5. So 7.5 is when I let go of the trans brake button. Red line is RPM. The little green line down there is the target boost. So there goes my, I had a 1.8 second ramp in it uh, for this one. So it was at, uh, 26 pounds of boost, and then it hit the the target, um, which I've made 29, almost 30 pounds of boost, 29.9, 29.6. So I got the I got to that level right there, 
at 2.24. So it was about four tenths of a second behind. Um, there's two tenths behind, 28 and a half. So that's about the two and a half part um, that I was talking about, about the two, two tenths back that I was talking about earlier. So you can see the RPM comes up. Boost stays pretty solid. Um, there's a couple bumps in there, 29.7, and then right there it bumps up to 30.4. That may have been a start of the wastegate sticking, um, but then it comes back down a little bit, uh, 29.8, and that was 32 pounds of dome pressure. So that's what I thought it was gonna make. Uh, it makes just a little bit less than dome pressure. So that right there is a good curve. So that is perfect. So I was very happy with that. So now, let me show you the one where the wastegate got stuck. Okay, so here is the run um, where the wastegate got stuck. Same thing, the um, the boost curve is the, the yellow and the target is down here. Um, that blue line right there is my back pressure too. This this turbo rocks pretty good on, on back pressure. Uh, it's about one to one, but I'm gonna take that off just so it's not in the way there. Um, so when it took off, same thing, it come up, it was a little laggy getting to the converter. I mean, but once it got there, two and a half seconds to get there, it made boost pretty fast. Uh, same thing, it left on 7.5 pounds again. So that's something that's interesting is, um, you know, I, I, I'm assuming on this pass right here, the wastegate really got, got stuck at the top when it was modulating. Because here you go, it's coming up, coming up. There's my target, uh, same thing. There's my, I did take two pounds off the dome, but it was at 28 PSI at the two seconds. I had a two second ramp and coming up, so it should have leveled out, but if you see the, watch the boost pressure. So from, from here, two tenths behind that would have been right there. That's where my boost should have been. Um, about 30 pounds of boost again, 29 and a half, 30 pounds of boost. But instead, it just keeps climbing. And so now we're at three seconds into the run. That's at 36 pounds of boost. And it's just a gradual. So only one of them was stuck. And so, you know, the, the entire boost was trying to be controlled out of one side of the motor and so you can see this it just didn't it just didn't do it i mean 39 pounds of boost 39.2 39.4 and um i mean so it went on through there and i um so it, you know it's just one of those things i mean it stuck and that's how when i saw that graph i knew exactly what had happened i was like a wastegate got stuck again and i was like well i don't understand really why but you know what it was i mean i took the one apart that i thought was sticking they were both moving freely early earlier in the day um because i checked them at the track and i took one off that i didn't know and the one i took off was not the one i rebuilt the other day um so in the last video but so this thing um you know comes up and it's just it boost creeps like crazy and so um you know luckily my tune-up's good you can see over here my, my target air fuel ratio and my air fuel it was good i mean I had enough injector. I mean, I had the time and I had the map. I mean, cause I've run the car up there at that, um, at that power level. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like it was in danger of, of a tune up issue, but it was in danger of a mechanical issue potentially. I mean, I got good stuff in it, but you know how I've got the spacer bearings in it. So I don't know that, you know, that's, you know, I don't know if that's going to hold 40 pounds of booze for an extended period of time. So, um, and I could feel it in the car too. I mean, you can see I shifted it a little bit earlier, um, but this converter, I've got a 331 gear in the back and it was lugging pretty hard. I mean, it was at a higher RPM, but I mean, it went through the, the finish line, um, you know, a little bit higher, only like 76, 7,700 RPM. So it wasn't bad, uh, but on the past before it was different. So, okay, so this run here um, was the semifinals. So the next run was the finals. So, you know, I thought, I was like, okay, well, the wastegate stuck. And that's where I failed in thinking this whole thing through. I was like, I know I've got a stuck wastegate, but what am I going to do? I was like, okay, I don't have much time. I'll just let it go the same way it did. And hopefully it'll follow the same boost curve, but it did not. So let me show you the boost curve on, on the last run. So I'm going to do a comparison on, on this one. I'll just do a comparison on the data log. Okay, so this comparison on the data log here, this is the, the run where it boost creeped up. And then this dotted line is gonna be the run uh, in the finals. So it had one wastegate controlling it all. I'm gonna zoom in um, so you can kind of see it a, a little bit better on exactly what, what happened and what went wrong. RPM comes up, same thing, RPM 4,000 launch, same thing, 10 pounds of dome pressure. 
Okay, so launch boost was exactly where it needed to be. It left identical, 7.5 pounds. But then you can see following the ramp here. So the dotted line is where it was stuck. So one wastegate could not control the boost um, and it, it couldn't control the ramp. It basically did not follow the ramp at all. And so you can see right here, this is where it, it got pretty problematic. At 0.65 seconds into the run, um, it was way up on boost. So right there, it was up from 18.4 pounds of boost is what it was on when it was stuck. And then the run where it stuck it and made it through, it was on 13.9. So, I mean, almost five pounds of boost. That is very aggressive. And then you can see it kind of tried to level out right here and and go, but at that point, you know, it had already got into tire spin. You can see right here, the RPM jumped up real high. And it tried to grab it and pull it down, but it was I think it was tire shaking right through there, and then it went up, it, it knocked the tires off. And it got right back to where the boost, you know, was at that point, but I mean, it knocked the tires off way before the 60 foot. So, I mean, it, you know, it's just one of those things. But that is, uh, you know, one of the problems with, with boost when you have a failure of something, either a wastegate or CO2 pressure, or you, you know, you miss um, the, the boost curve, or in this case, you have a stuck wastegate. So this is, um, you know, uh, it was an issue. It knocked the tires off, shook the tires, uh, started tire shaking them, knocked them off, and then I got the loss. I mean, the David Knight that I was racing, he he got on down through there and went through there with a killer pass. Um, had had this thing not stuck, we would have probably had a really good race, um, but it didn't. So that's, uh, you know, that's that's how you can see, you know, boost creep issues. And this is a good thing about the Holly, you can compare your data logs. And when you're comparing the data logs, you can really tell, you know, what happened and what went wrong. Um, the more information you got, and this is just the Holly HP. Uh, the Holly Dominator has even more information you can get. Lots of information, lots of good stuff. But so this is what happens when you have a sticking wastegate. Well, please like, comment, and subscribe if you have not already done so. I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, tune in next time. We're going to have some good footage coming out. Thanks for watching. Go fast and get some wind likes.